Hello, I thought I'd try a different approach just now. During the lockdown, the coronavirus were all isolating. So um, I think I'll have another wee walk in the garden and share it with you. And um, I hope you're all bearing up. I think I'm very lucky to have a garden where most of the time we are isolating ourselves here anyway, staying apart, looking after our garden. So let me just pick you up here and go for a wander. I'm up in the trough area here where some of the troughs are just starting to waken up nicely. We come down here we have some of the saxifragas. So this is, saxa, this is a saxifraga opposite hybrid. It's the one called Theoden. And it's growing nicely in there. You can see orchids Dactylorhizas coming through there. It's one of the wee forms of Primula marginata. More taxes coming out in the other troughs. The crows singing. One thing about being quiet, or notice so many more birds about. We were watching tree creepers last night in the garden and flocks of goldfinches. So more taxes and the raised beds and troughs, but they've still really to waken up here. I suppose if we go around the colours really in the still in the bulbs, down to one of the erythronium frames we have the this is a this is Crocus perlistericus. I'm not sure why the erythronium's coming out the middle of that lot. It's supposed to be a basket of er Crocus perlistericus, but hey, erythroniums in this garden basically get to go where they want. But so do the crocuses, because these all these crocus leaves are running. This is mostly erythroniums in here, so. But there's another basket of Crocus perlistericus. Beautiful colour. Over here, this. Erythronium dense canis. It's one of the typical standard type forms. And if I swing round here, we can see Erythronium hendersoni. Always one of the first as well. I am getting slug damage here, look. I'll have to come out and when it's a bit moist and hunt the slugs. As I get a bit older, I'm running frames down, so I'm gradually planting all these pots out. And I'll probably just plant this frame up directly with plants. I'll fill it probably to the top and make it a little bed. Much like I did with the sand beds in the, in the bulb house. So another frame with plunge baskets with some of the smaller plants is uh, sprawling over there. This is Corydalis creaked in red which at the time I named it was one of the reddest forms that I had seen. Although I've since seen some of my friends showing pictures of some that are even redder. But when it first comes out and before it gets floppy like this, it's nice because it holds all its flowers well above the leaves. So we've got the erythroniums leaves coming through, there's so much so much coming through different foliage. Some of the ones I'm trialling. These are Revolutum hybrids, so there's one there, another one there. This is this one here is looking the most vigorous. Nicely marked leaves. The bulbs bulking up well. So this will soon be a mass of colour. Oh I didn't show we just pop back the Another of the early ones is the yellow Erythronium tuluminense. I much prefer it to the Condo and Pagoda, the big hybrids. To be honest, I'm not so keen in them, but I know they're the ones that most people can get hold of and grow. But if you can get hold of the real tuluminense, it really is a stunning plant. We have several forms, so that's one of the earlier flowering forms. 
There's another form here. That's another group of leaves. That's another one. So that same um, will flower as you can see a bit later. And we have several different clones because we've been raising them from seed. And then more hybrids which we can come and see when the flowers come out. In the meantime this small bed down here that I made just maybe th was it three years ago I can't remember. I took away some little shrubs, little hebes and built a crevice bed with concrete and put in hepatica and corydalis seeds and now we're getting these lovely combinations coming up with hepaticas, different coloured hepaticas with the different corydalis. Most of the corydalis have turned out to be the, the pinky ones. There's a white, the same whitey hepatica that, that's been in flower for some time. Up here would be a nice pink hepatica. And typical of our garden as well as erythroniums seeding around everywhere. Mechanopsis seed around everywhere as well so not a not a bad weed to have in your garden. So we spin round repeating tidying up this side. I planted out more seedlings of hepaticas. Sitting here under the, the hellebore. There's a tiny skilla, a wee scylla down there. And up here more of the corydalis just seed around. They gently seed around. You can see young non-flowering seedlings here. And then the ones that have seeded. You get these lovely mixed clumps, different colours. Maybe we come around and the blue the wee blue shinodoxas and scillas and the small blue bulbs. There's a whole lot of them, they're dead easy. They will seed around, they make lovely clumps. Different ones. Around here the soon to be under the acers as they come out. We've got one of the erythroniums, uh, an oregonum hybrid. Again, an early flowering one. And there's more Corydalis everywhere. Round the path here, the wee blue bulbs have seeded in. Big leaves, Pritillaria imperialis. They're big bulbs and they take a number of years to get to flowering size and as they increase they, they, they need building up so I do feed them. As soon as I see a spike coming through I'll give them some potassium, potash, eh, not potassium, grow more. I give them some grow more as soon as I see the spike and then a bit later in the season I'll give them some potash. But that way we always have, so there's one, two, three, four, at least five, at least five flowering spikes there. Little daffodils, the colchicum leaves, it's a fair old jungle here now. We'll just spin round to the rock garden. We have some of the very early bulbs going over and then Scylla Rosini. Really nice deep blue Scylla Rosini when the sun comes round if it warms up it's still, although it's sunny it's still pretty cold. But these little flowers reflex right back and mim mimicking erythroniums. So there we have the, the bulb bed and I just want to wander up the garden a bit. 
seeing all the, the foliage, the lovely carpets, the foliage, how it's grown up and the erythroniums coming up through it. They're very happy to come up through. So here we have, what do we have here? This, I can get round so we can get some light into the subject. This is another Oregonum. Molly, don't eat the grass. The first signs of... First pink on some of the Erythronium Revolutum's coming. So if I come round to my new bed by the pond, my some of my little specials. Here we can see we just sit down on the edge of the pond. Primula marginata. And uh, it's now the Aranthus are fading. The early Erythronium caucasicum are now fading. And Narcissus cyclamineus is there in this various little corridalises that seed around. There's Trillium hibersoni. Different corridalis. His name slips my mind at the moment. Up at the top here, the, this will soon be seas of colour, but at the moment it's just erythronium leaves and buds, but they are pushing through quite rapidly now. Here's Molly. No many of you enjoy seeing Molly. My garden companion, she keeps, keeps the garden safe, or so she tells us. But more erythroniums. You know, sometimes they're just worth growing for the leaves. Oh, and look here. Oh, there's a spotty leaf of the Adaclariza. But down here, I planted out some seedlings of the Trillium ovatum maculosum, which is the one with dark marks on the leaves. And you can see the dark marks. It's not a particularly well marked leaf, that bit. I'm just going to take this little Cotoneaster seedling out of there. I don't really want a Cotoneaster growing there. But I can see another, other ones over there as well in the... So that's good, they're coming away nicely. Because I planted a lot of seedlings out in this bit. So I'm just going to walk around this bit. To wind up down here. Some of the Erythronium sibiricum's coming. Those of you that read this week's bulb blog, these are these three here, or the three I had carefully tipped out of a pot to photograph the roots in the bulb and then planted out here. These are some that were planted out previously, coming up and flowering now. Really nice. More Corydalis. Oh, and the Jeffersonia. I don't know how close I can focus in on that, but look at the colour of those Jeffersonia leaves as they first come through. I'm just spin round here. I can make my way past the bushes here. Here's them. This is Erythronium cocosicum. And look, here's the seed pod. And if that's, when that seed pod fell last year, it went bang and down there. And I didn't get the seed. The seed spilt out. And there, sitting right beside it, there's the seed germinating from last year. So I'm going to have a really nice clump of seedlings there. And as we come around this bit of the wall, You'll see more Trillium hibersoni all around here. Another one there. 
around there. These are, we're all planted out as seedlings and now they're seeding around. Round on the face of the wall, you can see the Trillimri valleys I planted cascading down, spreading down the face of the wall from a bigger clump and seedlings up there. And just for the last few minutes I'll walk around on this lower section, the colour up here. This is the shadier part of the garden in newer planting. This is where I cut back the shrubs. You can still see step trunks there that I haven't lifted yet. But just lovely little, nothing special, no fancy plants, just pure enjoyment and colour. But it's always a bit behind the rest of the garden up here. Erythronium seedling, seeding everywhere. Masses of them. Just self seeding. Clumps of them. Premulus. And of course the up on the the wall here we come down and on the face of the wall we've got erythronium dense canis more dense canis and they're seeding around and up into an early form trillium rye valley or pseudo trillium rye valley as some people are have moved it out of trillium and put it into pseudo trillium. There are some little rhododendrons coming into flower. This is a bush that I've, I've been cutting back. This was all overgrown. So this was a very scrappy bush and I have been cutting it back and you can see the new growth there and nice new growth down there so when we've had these flowers I'll, I'll chop this right back and try and rebuild that little shrub. So I'm just going to come round here to, to finish on a the rhododendron. I can come round to the other side, pass more of course, wherever you go, Corydalis and Erythroniums are out at the moment and the rest of the bulbs coming through. But up here, we have Rhododendron Pachysanthem. Beautiful flowers, beautiful leaves, and the new growth is glorious. It's a spreading shrub, it spreads out and that's why it's a bit of an ugly shrub. In it should have a it should spread out but I want to, I don't want it dominating the space so we keep keep hacking it back. It's a shame to have to do that but we don't have enough space to let it have free rain. So I'll finish this bulb blog video diary supplement there and hope to get back to you in the next week or so with another progress report of how the garden's doing. So thanks for joining me. Bye for now.